One of the questions we get most often is, what frame rate should I use for streaming? There are a lot of options and a lot of reasons for using different options, both from a technical and stylistic point of view. In this video, we'll go over what frame rate actually means, why there are so many different options, and some things to keep in mind as you make your decision. So you've set up your camera, your streaming software, your encoder, and you're ready to go live. First though, you're most likely presented with a choice in your camera and encoding settings for your choice of frame rate. So what is frame rate? Frame rate, often abbreviated as FPS, measures the speed that individual images or frames are captured and displayed to form a continuous video. The term actually comes from the days of film cameras, where frames of a celluloid strip would travel between the lens and be exposed through a gate at a certain speed. As you may know, a video file is just a series of individual pictures played back in succession to form the representation of continuous motion. Think of an old-fashioned flipbook you might have played with as a kid. In this case, the number of pages that you have and the speed at which you flip them defines both the capture and playback frame rate in a way. If you have 30 pictures in your flipbook and you flip the book in one second, your frame rate would be 30 frames per second. Early animators found the perception of motion to start taking place somewhere between 12 to 16 frames per second. Enter Thomas Edison. That's right, did you know he was a filmmaker? He determined that 46 frames per second was ideal for the human eye. Unfortunately, at the time, between the high cost of film and technical limitations with the stock, filming at high frame rates wasn't possible. Instead, most films were shot between 16 to 18 frames per second and projected between 20 to 24. This led to the often jumpy nature that's notorious in early silent films. As time went on, 24 FPS became the de facto standard for film, striking a balance between how much film stock would be needed and a natural looking motion. Later, in the 1950s, another factor was introduced in the advent of home TV. The first TVs, based on cathode ray tube technology, or CRT, required that the display refresh at AC line frequency or the flow of electric power running to a display. This is 60 hertz in the US and 50 in Europe. And because of this, standards for NTSC, or 60 frames per second, and PAL, or 50 frames per second, were established for broadcast television. In order to conserve bandwidth and present the most natural motion without flickering, engineers invented a creative method known as interlacing. Interlacing means that two video fields make up a single frame, similar to Venetian blinds. With interlaced video, odd and even fields flash one after the other. For example, with video filmed at 60i or interlaced, you're watching a half frame every 1 60th of a second and a full frame every 1 30th of a second. Progressive scan, on the other hand, means that each frame is displayed in its entirety sequentially, consuming double the bandwidth but providing for a much cleaner image. Generally, this is captured as either 30 or 60 frames per second. While interlacing was helpful for broadcast for many years, even standard practice up to the mid-2000s, progressive scan has quickly become more popular as displays such as LCD and OLED have replaced CRTs. So that brings us to today. 24 frames per second continues to generally be the standard for cinema, while 30 and 60 are used for broadcast. However, with the latest in digital capture and playback technology, videographers can break free from typical conventions and record in whatever frame rates are most suitable for their desired style. While the three most common rates, 24, 30, and 60, are characteristically displayed as whole numbers, you might also be familiar with seeing them represented as decimals. Dang, do we really need to get math involved here? That's right, as color broadcast TV replaced black and white, a very slight slowdown was required in the way that frames are measured in order to display effectively on older systems and prevent issues with sound. This is referred to as drop frame measurement and doesn't affect the visual image in any way, but is why you might see video frame measurement described as 23.98, 29.97, or 59.94 instead of whole numbers. So now that you know the history of frame rates, let's talk about how to choose between them for video. As we mentioned before, you have the creative liberty to determine both the frame rate at which your video is captured and displayed. Back to that flipbook analogy, if we added extra pages but flipped at the same rate, 30 pages per second, the animation would slow down almost as if we were displaying it in slow motion. That's why typical slow-mo shots are filmed in frame rates like 120 FPS but played back at 30 or 60. However, if we flip faster, the animation will appear at a normal speed but it'll have smoother motion overall because more frames of it are displayed. In practical purposes for streaming, you should always try to make sure that your display frame rate or what you actually have your streaming software or your encoder set to matches the input frame rate of your devices. For example, if your cameras are set to 1080p60, your encoder should be set to stream at 1080 resolution at 60 progressive frames per second. From there, it's all about the style that you're going for and the amount of bandwidth that you have available to use. Your frame rate is a part of a larger equation that considers the bitrate and the resolution of the cameras, 
both of which we'll get into in other videos. If you have limited bandwidth or CPU processing, it might be worth limiting your frame rate to 30 instead of 60, for instance, to make sure that frames don't need to be discarded or dropped due to the inability to process them or transmit them in time. Using a technology like Resi's can also come in handy, which transmits on a short delay through Resi's resilient streaming protocol to ensure that every frame makes it to the destination perfectly without dropping, even on troubled internet connections. Most of the time, we would recommend starting at 30. This strikes a good balance between natural motion of what most are accustomed to seeing and not being too intensive on yours or your viewer's connection. If you're streaming a faster event like a race, sports event, or a dance competition, a higher frame rate will give your audience the best viewing experience with the smoothest motion. And if you're looking for a more cinematic, dreamlike visual appearance for your stream, consider using 24 FPS. Many churches and live music concerts, for example, like to use 24 FPS to achieve a more film-like experience with their broadcasts, usually in tandem with using cinema lenses and cameras like the Canon C300 or Vericam. This is where a new tool called VFR, or Variable Frame Rate, can also be beneficial, which adds a third element to the equation. Within the camera, a frame rate is captured, but packaged into another output frame rate, which the camera then passes to the video switching infrastructure. This allows camera operators to dynamically choose between styles while maximizing compatibility with the system and can be used to record in multiple looks within a single stream. For example, using a cinematic style for music and a more natural, full motion look for speaking elements. We spoke to our friends at Summit Integrated Systems, who specialize in video system design for major house of worship venues around the world, about their recommendations when installing video streaming systems to achieve the style and goals that their clients are looking for. Frame rate, you know, plays a couple of big roles. One is more of a creative role. It's like, how do we want that image to look? Um, you know, whether we're more in that kind of very cinematic style or what we'd associate as being a cinematic style or the other end of like a more kind of a broadcast style of shooting. Um, so while it plays a creative function, it also plays a technical or a system foundation. It's, it's how the video system is measuring time. And as we kind of talk through a lot of other things, you know, like processing delays, things like adding uh, latency, a frame in a 59.94 um, has is much shorter, meaning it introduces much less latency, um, you know, than a video system set up in 23.98. Often when uh, devices talk about adding a frame of delay, that frame is a frame and you know how long that's actually going to take is always going to be determined by the actual frame rate of the system itself. To use an example of like a, a cinema camera, by default a lot of them might add something like five frames of processing delay which is the moment, you, you know, from the moment light hits the sensor to the moment it leaves, you know, that SDI spigot, it's going to add five frames of latency. Um, and in a system that's timed around, you know, 24 frames a second, for, for example, um, that equates to a really significant delay. So often when we're coaching a customer on selecting a frame rate for the system, we're really looking one, at the camera, what's that gonna add? And two, like what's the desired outcome um, or what's the desired environment? If we're shooting in live services, obviously our goal is to keep that latency, that number down as low as possible. Um, and that's where like a great feature like variable frame rate comes in. Um, most cinema cameras now will give us the option to function in a in, in, in like a 59.94 environment, um, but give you that, you know, 24 frames a second look. And where that's really powerful is if the cinema camera is gonna add, again, those five frames of uh, processing delay, well, in a, in, a, in a 59.94 environment, that equates to a lot less time. So often when we get a customer coming to us who wants to um, get uh, more of a cinematic style, more of a cinematic look um, uh, to their services, um, one of the options that we look at is a, a variable frame rate feature, um, which you find on a lot of cinema cameras. And where that is particularly powerful is it allows us to run a system in a higher frame rate like 59.94, um, which means that each frame is much shorter in actual like time, like milliseconds. And where that really comes in handy is if a cinema camera is gonna add five frames of processing delay between the light hitting the sensor and um, between that signal hitting the SDI spigot, then um, that equates to a much shorter amount of time. So we get the be benefit of both, uh, both worlds. We get the cinematic look that, uh, that the church really wants, but we also actually achieve lower latency, uh, meaning that for people who are in the room, not just people online, but people in the room looking at the real-time environment, again, what you see in the eyes is much closer to what you see on the screens.
A way to think about variable frame rate, uh, for example, if you're sitting at home watching TV and you're watching a movie, obviously your TV isn't going to change frame rates from between your broadcast programming and the movie that you just sat down to watch. And really, when you think of variable frame rate, think of it as packaging more of a cinematic look in a broadcast frame rate. Almost imagining it like, you know, doubling up, if you like, where instead of a frame being a frame inside of a 59.94 environment, a frame is actually two frames. But in essence, um, it's kind of like cheating a little bit where um, we get the look of um, a lower frame rate in a higher frame rate um, environment. Um, and another big win with that is, you know, sometimes um, where what we've seen happen with a lot of churches that do want to operate in more of the cinematic style is when it comes to teaching and preaching, like they don't necessarily want the preacher's arms to have that, you know, <laughs> that cinematic kind of strobing effect um, that can sometimes get a little tired. And what we've seen in the, with a lot of people is they will use the variable frame rate feature to get that slower, uh, more cinematic look during worship, but then switch to a higher frame rate to get that cleaner, smoother kind of image for preaching and teaching. Depending on the brand of camera, um, sometimes it's like a switch on the side of the camera that the camera operator will engage. So obviously the camera that's on air is in uh, still in the 24 frames. The camera's off air will, in, will hit the variable frame rate button and switch back into 59. Um, and then when the director swaps, then of course the camera that was on screen is now switching to 59.94 as well. So it's a little bit of a logistical uh, piece to work out, but you know, it's no different than when a camera is off air, we're finding focus, we're finding zoom, like we're finding where we want that shot to land. Uh, when the camera is off air, in that transition moment, that camera is also switching frame rates from that lower frame rate to that higher frame rate. So when someone comes to us and says, we want to build a system, we want it to be 2398, um, the reason why we might discourage them from really um, changing the whole system so that the frame rate is 2398 and encourage them to use a 5994 but use the variable frame rate feature um, really comes down to latency and processing delay. Um, at 5994, if the camera is going to add five frames of latency, we're going to see a much less significant impact time-wise between when someone in the room sees a movement on stage and actually sees that same movement happen on the screens. Um, in a mixed environment, like and by mixed environment, I mean both a hybrid of live and broadcast, um, really our goal is to get that image from the lens to the screens as quickly as possible. So when, uh, when an organization comes to us and is asking uh, questions about frame rate and what kind of frame rate should they operate in, um, I'd say there's probably many things that we'd, we'd have to um, take into account to really kind of give that kind of advice. Um, a lot of it honestly is um, artistic. Like when somebody's wanting to figure out whether they should go more the cinematic end or more the broadcast end, uh, a real reason why you might go one way over the other is, you know, uh, is an artistic or a, uh, a creative decision. Um, and so that's definitely a big factor that we got away. The other side of it is also um, the system itself. Um, we, I talked about it before about whether or not a system is going to be fully capable of doing 1080p um, at 5994. Um, that's that's a question. Sometimes we have to weigh that part of it into it. But you know, a big part of it um, in determining uh, frame rate is really not to tell someone how they're supposed to use a video system or how they're supposed to shoot a video system. It's actually to give them the right kind of backbone or infrastructure to a system that gives them the creative potential that they're really wanting. And what I mean by that is. You know, the whole idea of like a more cinematic frame rate versus a broadcast frame rate. Well, you know, if I can build a video system around 1080p at 5994 uh, frames per second, then um, really whether you want to operate in either realm is completely up to you. Um, in other words, the system itself is not going to be the bottleneck or the system itself is not going to be the thing that limits your creativity.